Hey folks, let me paint you a picture here. It's 2 a.m. and you've been programming all night and it's just not happening. You're trying to uh, create this new CRUD endpoint with the help uh, of AI and it just keeps doom looping, code is not compiling. Which is super frustrating, right? Because yesterday you wrote some super complicated authentication code and the, the agent just one shot at that solution worked first try. So you start to question your life decisions here. You start to question whether or not you should get better at prompt engineering. You probably should. Or that you even should give up your job as a software developer because uh, AI overlords will take over your job real soon. Well, this is a common frustration uh, when you get started with all this AI assisted coding stuff. And today I want to talk you through uh, the steps uh, that I went through and uh, show you some metaphors that help you think about uh, uh, working with AI that will hopefully make your journey easier. So uh, let's start at the beginning. Okay, let's go back a bit first. I want you to think back to that first time where you entered a prompt and hit enter and out came some beautiful code. It was exactly what you needed. It did everything. It was performant. It was secure. Remember that feeling, that amazing feeling? You know what it reminds me of? Las Vegas, baby. <laughs> this, uh, w what we're doing here, like prompting, looking at results, prompting, looking at results. It's the same dopamine rush, especially when it gets it right the first time. It's the same dop dopamine rush as a gambling addiction. And don't be confused, this thing is addictive. So uh, maybe like one small tip uh, when you get started with this stuff, maintain your sleep schedule, maintain your regular breaks, <laughs> because this thing is addictive and you need to be better than that. Uh, a second point for this uh, slot machine uh, metaphor is that in the real world, the house always wins. And in the real world, OpenAI and Anthropic will probably be winning uh, in the coming months, but you have the power to uh, favor the odds. You can do a whole lot by asking the right questions prompt and context engineering, uh, so you can influence these odds uh, to dramatically increase your hit ratio. So we have to stop thinking about LLMs as slot machines. We have to stop treating them like that and we have to start communicating with them more. Which brings me to my second point. So we need to like stop treating it like a slot machine, cool, uh, but then what do we need to treat it like? And this is where a metaphor I first heard from Ken Beck comes into play. And that is that these machines or these AI coding agents are something like code genies. Uh, and maybe to illustrate uh, what does Ken Beck mean with this? Um, sometimes when you ask uh, an agent to, for example, implement a new feature and make sure that all the tests are passing. That often works, but sometimes the thing goes ahead and deleted your tests and saying like, okay, everything's done. So it even covers it under the carpet. <laughs> or uh, often when I ask it to like, okay, let's add some error handling. It'll just go ahead and put a nice big fat try catch block uh, around my code and swallows all the exceptions. While it technically does what I ask, it does not do what I want, which is exactly what all these genies in folklore do. They grant wishes but often in a perverse way. So uh, programming with LLMs is not just about knowing the best prompting hacks. It's also about communicating intent clearly. And that is what you want, but also what you don't want. And you need to put guardrails in place, like automated test suites, uh, like having the code compile after every change, stuff like that. Uh, and also you need to validate whatever these things spit out because they are sometimes prone to over-exaggerating, pleasing, out front lying in your face. So you need to take a good long hard look at the code that comes out of these things. So now we know how to treat these things, how to work with them more effectively. And now I think you're at a crucial point in your AI assisted coding journey. Now you are facing a choice. And that choice as Andre Karpathy would say is, are you, uh, building a robot that will replace you? Or are you building an Iron Man suit that will augment you? Choose replacement. You become dependent on this thing. Your skills will get worse and worse by time. Choose augmentation. And this thing becomes a force multiplier. Your existing skills become more important and you will get more done. You will 
even like get twice, three times the amount of work done if you leverage these tools uh, productively. Okay, you just chose augmentation over replacement. Great. Once you start working with these tools for a while, uh, you'll start to notice something. And a lot of people frame this as, ah, oh, they're my junior developer and I can delegate like the easy stuff. And I think that metaphor has some merit. Uh, but I like to uh, compare it to uh, something else in my life. Uh, as you know, I'm a big dog person. Uh, I like to compare it uh, with training my one-year-old puppy. This is my dog, Django. And my dog, my puppy, gets really excited uh, when he sees me. LLMs are also frequent freakishly encouraging <laughs> they will always spur you on even if you're driving off a cliff uh and, and uh, that's just like my dog and he my dog is very eager to please he'll like try to do anything uh, to get my uh approval uh, which is also something that the llms do uh, but misunderstandings happen if you're not clear in your instructions again this is exactly the same as owning a dog so uh does this sound familiar because the best AI augmented coders are not just the best programmers. They are the best dog owners or they are best at clearly uh, delegating work, uh, putting guardrails in place, providing positive reinforcement or negative corrections uh, whenever things go wrong. Uh, one quote I often use is when you're working with these things, they can generate a lot of code really quickly. So you will never outcode them. But you don't only need speed, you need speed and direction. Leave the speed uh, to these uh, LLMs, but keep the direction in your park. That's our job. Okay, for my final point, which is like the big one that totally blew my mind the first time I heard it, uh, we have to go back to Andre Carpati. Uh, it's the same fellow from uh, the Iron Man suits metaphor. And that is that we have to stop looking at large language models uh, as like fancy autocomplete it's like a criticism you hear all of the time that's a really limiting way uh, you're really limiting your creativity and your potential if you look at them like that you need to reframe your thinking and start thinking of them like a new kind of machine they are a new programming paradigm your prompts they are not just requests your prompts are computer programs you are not just writing JavaScript code. No, you are writing code in the highest level programming language invented by mankind. You are writing programs in the English programming language. Uh, you can treat your prompts as code. Uh, you can check them in, version them, refactor them, incrementally improve them. You can do all kinds of stuff. Uh, there's a lot of more things that make sense if you use this metaphor. Uh, uh, you kind of need to know the underlying technology. It's the same as programming JavaScript or C Sharp, for example. Uh, there we have the term called mechanical sympathy, which means that you have to know the layer below the one that you're programming on uh, so you can get a feel of the uh, how the machine works. And that, that way you can squeeze the best out of it. Uh, it's also the case for this uh, technology, for this programming paradigm. For example, to make that point about uh, mechanical sympathy uh, a bit clearer, um, if you know how large language models work, you understand why they get confused af after you've been working on them in the current session. So technically they have like context windows and they grow and grow the more context you put in uh, in your uh, yeah in your context. And that's eerily similar to the current RAM limitations. A computer uh, only has this much RAM, and once it's full, you have to swap out stuff, uh, delete stuff, compact stuff, remove stuff. Uh, LLMs work very similarly, so you kind of need to know how large language models work. But once you do, and once you start treating them like a new kind of programmable machine, you will be the one that leverages this new technology effectively. So while other developers are still pulling those slot machine levers, you will be writing programs in the most powerful programming language ever created. And you should take this programming metaphor quite literally. You can actually reprogram a large language model so it becomes a linter and it can lint your code. Or you can reprogram it so it takes a lot of unstructured text, uh, does some data extraction and returns neatly formatted JSON. It's all possible. It's not always the fastest, cheapest uh, way uh, to write a computer program, but it's stupidly powerful uh, once you've seen it happen. 
And with tools like Cloud Code, uh, you just take a system prompt once you uh, like uh, spiked one out, you put it in what they call a cloud command or a cursor rule. I, I don't know if they have like something similar, but then it's just there and it's in your command line. You can invoke it like uh, just another command line application. It's stupid powerful and stupidly fun. So if you've not explored uh, uh, programming in LLM, please do so. Okay, so uh, it's time to recap. Let's go back to that 2 a.m. Uh, example. What, what went wrong there? Uh, well, first, you should not be treating this as a random slot machine. You should be stacking the odds in your favor. Uh, take a look at prompt engineering. Uh, take a look at how to do that well and efficiently. Number two, uh, you need to start learning how to tame a genie. Uh, you have to provide these things with just enough context, just enough constraints, not too much, not too little. Number three, you should be rocking an Iron Man suit. Uh, you should be choosing augmentation over getting replaced. Uh, also, these things are like eager, enthusiastic puppies. This, these things need positive reinforcement and immediate feedback when things go wrong. Uh, for now, at least, you kind of have to be around <laughs> and have to be on the loop uh, to validate whatever comes out of it. Uh, and lastly, you are not just getting better at using AI effectively. Uh, you should be treating this as becoming fluent in a new programming paradigm. We are programming a new kind of machine here. So uh, how far along are you in your AI assisted coding journey? And do any of these metaphors make sense to you? Please let me know in the comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.